Today we're going to be taking a look at these budget in-ear monitor earphones. These are the T2s from Tin Hi-Fi. Now this falls into a category that people seem to refer to as Chi-Fi or Chinese Hi-Fi. What that is, is like budget Chinese brands that people haven't really heard of that are releasing really good quality earphones, a lot of other products as well, but mostly earphones, and selling them really cheaply and way undercutting the competitors from much more recognised brands. So we'll be take a look at what these are like, and hopefully they'll be really good headphones for me. Currently I just use these old Sony XB50s, I think they are, which have been good and I've used them for years, but the cable's starting to go on them, so like the, the, the issue is the microphone connection's dodgy. So what that means is when the connection breaks, it causes my phone to pause the music, which is really irritating, so these need to be replaced. I didn't really buy these for any particular reason, I literally, I think I was travelling and just my old one's broken and I just bought these very quickly. So we'll take a look at these, hopefully these will be pretty good. And the cool thing with these is the price. These only cost £42, which is a lot for basic in-ear headphones, but these apparently are really good quality. So we'll take a look at these headphones, but what we'll also do is later take a look at this adapter here, which we'll be using to convert these to work over Bluetooth. So we'll take a look at that in a minute, because it's quite interesting how these work, and it's something I've not really seen on other, well I've never had headphones that have done this before. But yeah, let's take a look at these. So we'll get these out of the box first. As you can see, I've not opened it, I want to give my full first impressions on camera. Try and get that open. I'll see what these are like. There we go. So, open that box up. Oh. Obviously there's not much on here, there's a lot of Chinese writing. I don't know if these are like targeted for the Chinese market, or they are actually just made for export, but just... Yeah. It's quite cool because they undercut all the other brands because they're not really marketing them as much. And when I said these were £42, that was from Amazon. There's links in the description. You can actually get them even cheaper on AliExpress, but I, I wanted to get them quicker, so I thought I'll just buy it directly from Amazon. So, we've now got them out here. And you see they come in a sort of like leather effect box. It's quite fancy. It's not what I'd expect from a cheap Chinese product. So it goes in here. We've then got some manual, fairly standard. Although is that, is there any English in here? Is that entirely Chinese? Yeah, I think he's actually entirely in China. No, there's no English on the back, but yeah, you shouldn't need these earphones. And here's the earphones themselves. So what you'll notice here straight off the mark is the cables aren't pre-attached. These use an MMCX connector, which turns out is a standardised connector. So the connector on the earphone there is a standard connector, so you can replace the cable. And that's what sold me on these, or really on any other MMCX headphones. And that, it made me say I want ones that have these, and I happen to go for this particular type particular model. And that's because every set of in-ear headphones I've had before, it's always the cable that fails. I've had the cables fail where they connect to the earphone, I've had the cables fail where they connect to the phone, or to the 3.5mm jack like my current ones, and I even had a set, I think it was Sennheiser CX 3.0s I think, where the cable works fine but it just degraded over time and the rubber became really sticky, it was like bizarre, it became like a really sticky rubber material. So that's why I got these, because in theory I should never need to replace these because, well, the, the cable's replaceable. So, pull it out, and in here you'll then see you have the cable. It's quite an interesting thing, it's, it's like, actually like rough, like it's, it's twisted wires without an outer sheath, so... Feels a bit unusual, I'm not sure what I think of it. Like, those are like individual wires twisted together, but they're actually literally just twisted together, like you can untwist them like that. They seem fairly tightly twisted, so hopefully they won't unravel in, like, in transport. But yeah, that's kind of interesting. But on the end there, you've then got the two connectors to go to each earphone. And I'll need to work out which way is the right way round. That's the right one, which I think's usually the red colour. Actually, uh, yes, that's that's how it fit in my ear. And in theory, those just clip in like that. Yep, and that's very secure. So that's my only fear, that this, if these weren't secure, they could then pop off, but yeah, that feels really secure on there. Cool, so that's two earphones you've got there. You've got these two sort of just regular type tips on there, you get a big bag of other tips, and you also get these sort of memory foam tips that look quite cool. When I've seen people trying these, they all seem to use the blue memory foam ones, so I'll give these a go. Um, not sure how they'll be, never used foam tips before, I've always just used the normal ones, but we'll see what they're like. That's nearly quite almost tacky, yeah. But yeah, we'll try these out. 
So what I'll do is I'll need to go away off camera and try these out and then I'll come back with my feedback. But what we'll do first is we'll take a look at the, this Bluetooth adapter. So we'll move these off camera just now and take a look at this little gadget. Now this is from a brand called KZ, which is another Chinese manufacturer. Similar idea, they also do headphones. And this costs $23.99 from Amazon. And this is an Aptex HD Bluetooth adapter. And as I've shown before, these use that MMCX connector, and so does this adapter. So what you can do is you can take this, connect it onto these earphones, and use them as Bluetooth earphones. There's also a cheaper version of this. It's about 20, no, it's about 12 pounds, I think that's a little bit older and doesn't support Aptex HD, it's only a Aptex, like the regular one. So I decided to spend the money and go for the slightly higher end model. We'll take a look at this, see what you get. So in this bag here, oh, you get a USB charging, that's just a micro USB charging cable. That's not very exciting. But yeah, like the world's tiniest micro USB cable. That's annoying with this, it's micro USB, not USB-C. It's 2020 and this product came out probably like you know, within the last couple of years. It should probably be, be USB-C really, but oh well, I'll live with it. There's the adapter itself. So you pop this out of the little bag, see what this is like. So what you get in here, get all that off camera, you get this adapter. So, ah. Huh. Now interestingly that's a grey, I'm pretty sure it was black in the picture, but it's not a problem, that definitely isn't the right colour. I mean, I, I'm not complaining, it's fine, and actually the grey kind of goes with that, so that's okay. The pro that's one thing with these like cheap Chinese products is that, yeah, the colours and stuff just change randomly. But what you've got, you've got these two bits here that go around your neck, you've then got the controls on one side, and then you've got these MMCX connectors. So what we can do is we can take the earphones we've got here, pop off these connectors, which, like that, there we go. That was pretty secure, so I'm not worried about that coming off by accident. Again, like that, take that off. And then again, if you find the left and right, so that's the right one. Push that into there. Click. Push that one into there. There we go. And what I've now done is I've converted these wired headphones into wireless ones. So I can now use these with Bluetooth. So this is really nice, so it means that I can not only replace the cable if the cable fails, or I can upgrade it to a different type of cable, I can also move to things like Bluetooth. And then the other benefit of this, rather than just buying a set of Bluetooth headphones, because I'll probably use these with Bluetooth most of the time, is that I can replace bits. So if in the future a new standard of Bluetooth audio comes out that's better, or this adapter fails, or the, you know, the battery degrades with time and, these, and you know, the battery life becomes poor, I can just replace this 23, 24 quid cable and keep the, head, the earphones that I like. So it just makes things a lot more flexible. And then if I'm going on a long flight and I don't want to have to deal with Bluetooth or the battery life or anything like that, I just want to plug them in just to get rid of any faff, I can just pop the Bluetooth cable off, put the regular cable on, continue to use the exact same earphones with the same sound that I'm used to, but just have them wired. So it seems like quite a flexible way of doing it. And even though these earphones were more expensive than, than I would probably normally spend on earphones, because I don't use these for much, I just use them for travel, I shouldn't need to buy another set again because every set I've replaced in the past has always been a cable problem. So, I mean, the cable's replaceable. So, unless the driver on these blows or I want a change, I shouldn't need to replace these. So what I'll now do is I'll run away off camera and I'll just try these out, I'll see what I think. I'll test them with both the wired cable and the Bluetooth and yeah, I'll just come back with my feedback. Okay, so I've been trying these out for a couple of days and they're absolutely excellent. These are single-handedly the best in-ear headphones I've ever used. Now, obviously I'm not, I don't test a lot of in-ear headphones, so I've not tried anything higher end than this. But for context, I normally use the sort of ones about the, between the maybe 30 to 50 pounds mark from things like brands like Sony and Sennheiser. So if you have various Sennheiser CX type headphones, a few different Sony ones, and these have blown all of those out the water. And for 41 pounds, they're absolutely brilliant. So yeah, for the actual, obviously there's the two parts here, there's the T tin T2s and then there's a the Bluetooth adapter. So for the headphones themselves, they're absolutely brilliant. The build quality is excellent, the sound is great. It's, I'm trying to try almost, it's, like, it's hard to describe sound and obviously I can't play it to you, but it's just very even. Every other set of in-ear headphones I've had like this have always been like really bass heavy and had quite muddy highs. 
And I think it's because what they do is they go, well, the average consumer is like, woo, base, base is good, I want base. So they massively boost the base on them. I mean, these are literally the Sony Extra Base is the branding on these. And they massively boost the base to make them sound powerful, but then the highs become a bit muddy. Whereas on these, you've got bass. It's not overpowering, it's not ridiculous, but it's very clear. But then the highs are great. So the vocals are really clear. If there's like a hi-hat or a higher frequency in the song, you hear it really clearly. And it's not sibilant, which is good. There's, it's, it's interesting, it's like as close to being sibilant as it can be without actually being sibilant, which is great. I use DT770s at work, and they can be a little bit sibilant at times. With these, I've not really sensed any sibilance at all, so they're actually really, really good for that. But the highs are just so clear on them, it's really, really good. So yeah, if you're looking for a really good sounding in your headphones, these are absolutely brilliant. The tips are also great. These foam tips work really well for me anyway. They squish up, they're like a memory foam, so it's, you can all see there, if I squeeze them, they, they maintain their shape for a little while. So when you put these in your ears, they don't fall out, they stay in, and they block out a lot of outside sound, which is great. Now bear in mind, if you did have really small ears, you might not be able to get this in. For me, it's marginal. I can easily get them in, but it does take a little bit of force. If my ears were much smaller, I would probably struggle. My only concern with these is from like a hygiene perspective, is unlike sort of regular tips like this that are just solid plastic, these are more of a sort of foam material that feels a bit porous. It feels like those cheap, you know, earplugs you'd use in like a loud work environment. It's a bit porous and spongy, so I'm not sure, like, you know, could earwax or bacteria or stuff like that get trapped in this? And I can't easily find replacement tips. Well, you can find third-party replacements, but I can't find these from Tin Hi-Fi themselves. So I'll be interested to see how these hold up with time, if they end up, like, getting stained or mark or anything with time. So they seem fine, but, yeah, from a hygiene perspective, because they are a little bit porous-looking, bit concerned but they definitely work really well so I'm going to keep using these ones. However if you want to use other types I've never seen a set of headphones that's come with so many different sizes of regular tips. So if you've got if you struggle to get headphones to fit your ears these are a great option because there is a huge number of different sizes you can see here of all different tips so that's really good. Next up is the cable. So this is a cable it comes with. This is almost a bit of a complaint it's not it's not bad, like, I mean, he says, having it totally tangled off camera, um, like, it feels fine, it feels like good quality, it looks quite cool, the plug's, you know, really nice, it feels really premium, but I think they've almost gone a bit too far with it, like, it's because it's not in an outer sheath, it's not like any other cable where you've also got multiple wires in an outer sheath, it's just individual wires braided together, so you can, see you can almost untwist it like that. And while it looks quite cool, it tangles really easily. Like, you can see me when I undid it there, it was neatly packaged up and it just got totally tangled. So it does tangle quite easily. And for me, it doesn't do much for me appearance-wise. What this reminds me of is like a pull cord light switch you'd get in a bathroom. It's that sort of like, it looks like a bit of string, which doesn't really give off a premium feel. So while it's, it's it feels, it looks more premium than a basic cable, it's not the best. I'd absolutely use it, I don't have a problem with it, but I would have rather this was like encased in like an outer sheath. They could keep it looking like this inside, but put it in something to make it feel a little bit nicer and not tangle up as easily. It's not a bad cable though, and of course because it's those MMCX connectors, these are easily replaceable and fairly cheap to replace, so that's not a problem at all. So yeah, the cable's okay, it's just maybe not to my taste. But outside of that, what we'll now talk about is this Bluetooth adapter that I've been using. So I've used this cable a little bit to try it out, but I've focused mostly on the Bluetooth adapter when I've been using it. And this thing, it's great-ish. It's hard to describe. For the price, for the odd pounds it costs, this is excellent. It's really good value. The sound quality is great. It goes pretty loud. The sound quality between this and this cable, I can't tell the difference. What I did in my testing is I connected this cable to my laptop and connected it to one earphone connected the Bluetooth adapter to the laptop and connected it to the other earphone. And then, because I use a Mac, under, under the MIDI settings on Mac OS, I created a multi-output device and used the Bluetooth adapter as the clock. And what that meant is I outputted the left channel over the cable, the right channel over the Bluetooth, into each of my ears. But using the Bluetooth as, as the clock, it synced it up perfectly, so I wasn't getting any sort of difference in timing between the ears. 
so I could actually listen to the cable and the Bluetooth adapter in perfect sync, one in each ear. And I could not tell the difference. Like, I just genuinely couldn't really tell the difference. I mean, I suppose maybe the, like, the cable had a slight advantage. You could, I think there was a slight bit more clarity across the board, but, which goes against me saying there was no difference, but there maybe was a, the tiniest little different benefit towards the cable, but it was so small that this thing still sounds great. And bearing in mind that was on a Mac, which doesn't support Aptex HD, on a phone it would sound even better. And I think when I went between the Mac and the phone, this did sound better on the phone because the phone was Android and supported Aptex HD. So yeah, the sound quality of this is brilliant. I saw some people complaining about background hiss, and it does have that, but it's low enough that it doesn't bother me. I imagine that might be an issue depending on your earphone. If you had like really sensitive earphones, the hiss might become more noticeable. But with the T2s, there was a hiss if there was total silence, but it wasn't a problem. As for any other like complaints with it, nothing too major. I would much rather it was USB-C than micro USB, because my phone's USB-C, my laptop's USB-C. I've always got a USB-C charger with me, but now I need a separate cable for this. So that's a bit annoying. The battery life seems brilliant and it charges really quickly, which is good. But one thing I found when I was using it is at one point the battery died and it made an announcement saying low battery. And I thought, okay, that's good, you know, low battery, that'll give me maybe half an hour of playtime remaining. No, it gave me about 30 seconds. So it was like low battery, 30 seconds of play, cuts off. And I'm like, ah, you know, give me a bit more notice to charge it than 30 seconds. So that's a bit of a complaint. Okay, so I thought I'd now quickly talk about the fit of these. So we've got the earphones here, and if you put them around your neck like that, like the way you're meant to put them in, put them around like that, and then they go over your ears. The wires on these are permanently curved. Unlike the cheaper one, which is the non-Aptex HD model, the, that cheaper one's meant to have flexible wires, so you can bend it to be straight and have it hang down like that. On these ones, the cable's permanently curved, so you have to have it over your ear like that, which is fine, I suppose. So that one goes in that ear there, and then this one goes in the other ear here. Need to make sure I don't shout here because I've got earphones in. And then the cable sits around your neck like that, and you've got the buttons here on this side. Now, the issue with this is you've not got a flex, you've got a very flexible cable around the back of your neck, not a solid band. So what that means is if you're moving a lot or you go to adjust the buttons, it's very easy to pull the whole cable round to one side and then it looks ridiculous and you're constantly pulling it back round. So it works, but it's not as good as a lot of other earphones and it does look a bit, there's cable, a lot of cable. So it works fine, but it's not the neatest. What I actually end up doing when I use it is I actually don't do that. Instead, I put it in my ears like that and I end up dropping this cable in the front of my shirt. And while it's not how you're meant to do it, I find this is a lot more comfortable. It looks a lot better. I've not got that cable dangling all over the place. And I can still access the buttons here. So that works for me. Whether that works for you or not is up to you to decide. But yeah, it works pretty well, but they're not as comfortable as ones that would have a solid band around the back. However, there is a benefit of this. Got the microphone is that if you have a solid band at the back, it's quite stiff and it ha it's, it's hard to transport. Whereas this, because it's this wire, you can just quite easily crumple it up and then sort of stuff that in a pocket. So it's a bit of a trade-off. You've got the trade-off between having a solid band and having it fit better around your neck or having the flexible wire there where, yeah, it looks a bit rubbish around your neck, but you can stuff it down the front and that's okay. But it's much easier to transport. So yeah, I'm not a fan of wearing these around my neck. I'd much rather drop them down the front. But yeah, that's just worth bearing in mind if you're going to wear them, that you do kind of have a lot of wire there to deal with, and that the wire here is permanently bent. It's not flexible like it is on the older model. So, a few minor complaints with this. Bluetooth adapter, and the kit there, this isn't the earphones, this is just Bluetooth adapter. So a few minor complaints with it, but it still sounds excellent. So I do recommend this. You might want to go for a higher end one if you want a nicer cable and stuff like that, but for the price, it does work really well. So there you go. That was a look at the T2 earphones from Tin Hi-Fi, as well as this Aptex HD Bluetooth cable from KZ. So that was a sort of two-in-one review, looking at the two products combined and how I'm going to be using them. So it's more focused on my impressions and my experience with my use case. But yeah, I'm very happy with both these products. A couple of minor gripes with the Bluetooth cable, but 
for the price, this stuff's excellent. You know, these costs, this whole setup was 65 quid. For this audio quality and this sort of repairability and flexibility, it's great value. I really like this stuff. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in buying either the earphones or the Bluetooth adapter, there's links in the video description.